blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
weakness will never remain the same. Your fear will never be the same. If you ever see Jesus, your concern for humanity will be different. If you ever see Jesus, your interest for souls will change. Jesus came down to earth to show us whom God is. And we who see him, I'm not talking by drawing. I'm not talking of by picture. I'm talking of the living Christ. No man that ever saw Christ remained the same. The woman would issue a blood, say, if I may but get close enough to touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. The man that was born by four, the four men that carried him said, we can take you near him, but from the top of the roof, if we drop you and you meet him, he will tell you something. The Bible said they tore the roof and let him down. And my Bible said when Jesus saw their faith and saw the man, he said to him, Get up, take your bed, and go your home. Every time people met with Jesus of the Bible, Something happened. Something changed. The man by the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years agonizing years painstaking years I believe after the first two, three years his wife lost courage and hope. I can't take it anymore. They abandoned him there. And when Jesus arrived, he said, Man, will you be made whole? Do you need a change in your life? The man said, I have no one to help me. Jesus said, that's why I'm here. Get up. Take up your bed. Go to your house. Watch the drama. The man went home because he saw Jesus. So I wrote this young man, I said, if you ever see Jesus, your ministry will change. You will look at people the way God look at them. You never laugh at a sick man anymore. You have compassion. You never laugh at the poor anymore. Dr. Festus heard me say this about three months ago in our home church. The reason God never laughs at anyone found in a state of despondency, sickness, or sin is because he's a good God. He has no one else to refer you to. In medicine, if sickness is brought to you as a doctor and that's not your field, you refer them to another doctor. Let proceed. Doctor refer you to cancer ward if you have cancer. The doctor that take care of delivery refer you if you have blind eyes. To eye optometrist. The doctor of teeth refer you pregnant woman to a doctor that knows what to do about delivery. But when you come to Jesus, he has no one to refer you to. Christ is the end of search. You can't find Jesus and still look for something else. For in him we live and move and have our being. And this morning, having spoken to the Lord, I 
have a message I want to have as a teaching for you and I. Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11. Us. That as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. I want to turn my attention to you pastors here this morning. The need has come that we should have enough to give that people press to hear us. This is a time that the whole world should find something from a whole God that can make man whole. Total gospel for total man. Jesus was a prophet in town. Look at what the Bible says here. The people came and pressed upon him. I say this to pastors in America every time. Once a pastor has a church of 2,000, 3,000 members in America, you can't see him. Walkie-talkie everywhere in the church. Pastor sneak in and pastor sneak out. Pastor cannot pray for the sick anymore. He has his recorded prayer. He has a secretary to block you. I know one pastor in particular that I knew when he was a young preacher. It now takes three months to book appointment to see him. Because his ministry has come up. You begin to wonder if Jesus were here today. If it would take three months for a leper to see him. For we have not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. And when you become unreachable and untouchable, it was better you look for another job. Let us touch him. If thou will, that can't make me clean. My Bible says he reached out his hand Touch them and say, be clean. He didn't contact leprosy when he touched lepers. He didn't become blind when he prayed for the blind and they began to see. Here my Bible says, they pressed upon him. There's something in us that the world needs. Let's give them opportunity to press upon us. Let's not treat them like lepers. Let not pride come to us when we ask security men. Sit them far. Don't let them come. They press upon him to hear the word of God. And I put it this way. The man that has something to say have something to give. Pastors, our world need us. They were pressing on him here to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Genesaret. Hear these words. When was the last time people pressed on you to hear you? Who of recent was weak and weary and looking for deliverance that looked for you instead of yellow page? Verse 2. He saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them. And were washing their nets. 
Dr. Westcott has spent about one hour on this second verse this morning. God is need-centered. God is concerned on what affects us. When your business is not running well, God is not running away. When your marriage is sick, God is not running away. When your children are not listening to what you are preaching, God is not running away. When a pastor's church is not growing, God is not running away. When your health is in trouble, God is not running away. One hour I spent on verse 2. How could he be pressed upon by a large multitude? And the next thing is for him to appear in where there was need. This one told me God is concerned in where I'm concerned. Peter and his team mates. Mark 1 says to us they left their nets because the nets were torn. Matthew says to us they were washing their nets and mending their nets. Why is it that when we are in Jopadio's situation, Jesus is always around? Why don't he stay far off when we finish battling and are defeated before he arrives? His need centered. What made him appear at the scene where these men were battling? When there was short supply and surplus need. Why did he show up when income went down and bill went up? Why did he show up at this time? He has an idea of where we are right now. Somebody better listen to me. The crowd, Dr. Festus, does not stop him from my personal need. Somebody should hear what I'm saying. People press upon him, Mama Doreen. But here he is coming straight to where the ship was. The more they pressed on him, Push, push, push. He was walking, walking. They were on him, on him. Heal me, touch me, open my eyes, make me whole, cleanse me, bless me, touch me, feed me. Here he was as a crowd pushed upon him, gradually walking to the spot where a few men were battling for their existence. And suddenly he paused. And the crowd still behind. The question I asked myself when I got to this verse, how did he know that their nets were torn? And that if he didn't come that time, these men would go home to meet a hungry family. Hear me, brother. The presence of the crowd did not stop him from coming to the simple. By human training that we have, once we are successful with crowd, we abandon the neglected. 
By the nature of God, the teeming crowd does not blind him from your needs. Somebody should hear me this morning. If you were faced with 10,000 people and they were pressing on you, pressing on you, everybody shouting, Hallelujah! Here comes the Hosa, victory, testimony. I will be so full of the joy of what I'm facing that I wouldn't remember Peter has got nothing. But Jesus is not like that. In the midst of the multitude, he remembers the hungry. He came to them and stood by the sheep by the lakeside. The fishermen were gone out washing their nets for they've got nothing. What made him appear? At the scene of a man that caught nothing. The reason is simple. When Jesus appears, the devil disappears. When Jesus appears, scarceness disappears. When Jesus appears, mediocrity is gone. When Jesus appears, Starvation disappeared. Jeff, think of 10,000 people pressing on him. How he took them gradually to come to where you and she were. Here you are battling with tomorrow, today. But look at Jesus coming to the center and meeting you at the point of your need. Why did the presence of the crowd not stop him from coming to you? I said to myself, Man have been trained. Success. That's all I need. The needy is not whom I want. But Jesus by nature is, if I don't meet the need of this one, you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
he would not join the crowd. I said to Dr. Festus on the way, why would someone have second bread in the front row of communion while those at the back have not had the first? Jesus knows when you have nothing. He arrives before you cry out. Verse 3. Read me verse 3. God knows how to step to our empty lives. <sighs> if God did step to my life when he did, I would not be in Australia today. You've got nothing. Peter's partners. Peter said we have toiled all night for three days. We've got nothing. Why is it that the sheep of the man that have toiled and caught nothing is the one that attracted his attention? You can't do it without me. I've come to lend you my helping hand. And we who are pastors that are here today, I see that some of your sheep have no fish. And some of your nets are torn. Even your Bible is worn out. But thank God he brought you here. Thank God he brought me here. I can still hear God this morning say, The ship that is empty is what I need. Give it to me. Maybe some of you are about quitting. Thinking that this is not your calling. If it was your calling, why is it that those who preach less than you do are successful? And you who preach so much, no result. God sent me to tell you today. This is not quitting time. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. This is not the time to quit. A man that has no self-courage will have self-destruction. Peter, loan me your boat. Plant a seed in my life. Allow me so take what you are struggling with from you. Somebody say that. Permit me to take from you what you are struggling with. That I may help you. Think about that for one minute. What are you struggling with? What are you battling with? What is taking your attention? Where is your pressure right now? Carefully hear me. The multitude is pressing. His attention is to one man. That I've got nothing. And you could be the one today. Your self 
effort is not good enough. But His grace to you is sufficient. Can you hear Him telling you? You've done your part. No result. Permit me to step to your empty boat. Allow me to step to your empty boat. Of course, when ship is empty, it's easy to give. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? If there's nothing in your ship, it's easy for you to offer it. If your net is turned, very easy to give it away. And Peter said, here you are, sir. Take it. And from my Bible account, from what I read this morning, nearly three hours, There's a man that is closer to you and I than a husband and wife are to each other. His name is Jesus. In building contract in civilized nations, they say, build this house and the contract you write minus natural risk of the acts of God. Earthquake or fire. When there's trouble, is not part of this contract. But Jesus takes risk from us. Whether we are faced with earthquake, or fire quake, or empty bank account quake, He comes when things are worse. Not to make it worse, but to make it good. He steps to our life, Harry. When no one else is interested. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying today. Give all your emptiness to me. Allow me to step to it. Jesus stood on top of that ship. It was empty. The Bible says he preached to the multitude. Read me verse 4. Pastor Fessor, read verse 4 loud. So now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and lay down your nails for a drought. It doesn't matter how busy Jesus is, you are his business. I wish somebody would say amen to that. Pastor, it doesn't matter how busy God is. You and I are his business. He healed the sick. He met their needs. But he didn't forget he came to you. And took your empty ship. When he had left speaking. He turned to Peter and said. You were the reason I came here. The need of the crowd have been met. Hosanna everywhere. Hallelujah everywhere. Glory to God everywhere. But I took your empty boat. I stepped to it. I wouldn't leave it the way I met it. I wish somebody heard that. God never leave us at how he met us. If he met you naked, that the madman of gathering will give you clothes. If he met you bleeding, that the woman would issue of blood, your blood will stench and dry up. If he met you hungry in the desert, he will feed you. Jesus never met anyone and shook his hand and said, Sorry, today is Tuesday. Bank is closed. Sorry. I see you on Monday. He never met a leper and said, I wish there was a clinic. I would have healed you. But next time, who knows? God may help you. No. He never. He never. He never. You are too holy for people to see. You are too dirty for God to know. 
Write that down for me, Festus. <laughs> if you are too holy for people to see and meet, you are too dirty to be a child of God. For we have not an high priest that cannot be touched. Peter, I borrowed your boat. I met their needs. But I've come to you now. Take the same boat. Pack it apart. <laughs> Take it to a new location. Bring your net out. I call this one God's intervention. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. of your ministry and business and marriage many times we think God doesn't know here is Peter thinking in his mind what does he know about fishing my profession is a carpenter by title is a prophet by birth is son of God and me I'm a fisherman how can he ask me to go to new depth Some of you have been fishing in shallow water. And God is saying you can't catch a big fish in, swallow, in, in shallow water. Your ministry must have been at the peripheries and yo 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 of the latest move in town. Whatever you call the latest move is an old move. Because if God wants to do a new thing, he doesn't do it through man. He shows it to man. Somebody should hear me this morning. Peter! 
The reason you have caught nothing is that what you wanted to catch was for you and your wife and children. That's what God told me this morning. When our gospel is me, myself, and I, we don't go too far. When all the money you are looking for in life is for your personal need, you don't have too much. Somebody is listening to me. Can you read me verse 4 again? Because I have a revelation in verse 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. I think he was saying to Peter in King James Version, which is the real Bible. <laughs> you are too used to the usual way. Try another method. If you want to collect, disconnect. Put it down. If you want to collect, disconnect. You are too connected to the old system. The way we used to do it. What I learned from my grandfather. Try God's new way. What is he showing you? Are you so hooked to one method that you never tried another method? Oh God, all happy energies for a hope for years to come. Try God of mercy, God of grace. Jesus didn't come to destroy. He came to add. Pastor Harry, I spent 30 minutes on John 10, 10 this morning. I'm come that they may have. So say that everybody. Say it again. I don't know what you don't have. But I know why Jesus came. It's for you and I to have. And somebody say amen to that. Amen. Have. Say the word have. Yes. I'm come. Yes. That you may have. Yes. I'm come. Yes. That you might have. Yes. You know more than I know what you need. But Jesus is come that you may have it. To the barren to have a child. To the unmarried to have a husband. To the sick to have health. To the poor to have miracle. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I spent 30 minutes on that line. I'm come that you may have. God knows how much lack we have. So He's come that we may have. Only you can fill in what you don't have. But He has come that we might have. If it's life, life abundantly. Somebody say big amen. Connect to collect. Take your sheep. Relocate for new collection. That's what you did. That's why you are here in marriage. You, dis you, 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 you disconnected to collect. If 
your position cannot change you, change position. If you are not doing well as superintendent, do well as overseer. If you can't do well as a pastor, try well as evangelist. Don't let title kill you. Because when you get to heaven, you will not be called Archbishop. I tell my people at home, the highest title I will have in heaven, faithful servant. God is not, a, God is not going to say, your grace, come in, sir. He's going to ask me, why were you calling you, why were they calling you, your grace? I say, because of your grace. Can anybody say amen to that? That's all I'm going to say. I have to defend myself. Trust out for drought. Drought is more than a catch. Catch is to take few. Drought is to limitlessness. You have to change that verse in your Bible. Drought. You can count your catch, but you can't count your drought. Jesus stepped to where we are. To take us from limitation to limitlessness. And somebody say hallelujah. <sighs> Verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. Everybody read it in your own Bible. One to go. Say master. master. I didn't hear you. Master. Christians in Australia say loud. Master. master. Louder. Master. One more time. Master. master. You who know how to handle situations, master my situation. Take over. But here, Peter, we have toiled. I don't know why he made them become the master of toiling and catching nothing. We've toiled all night, we've caught nothing. Is there some effort you have been making? And no result. Thank God for the master of the situation. Somebody should say loud amen. amen. We have a man who knows how to master our toiling situation. Particularly when we toil and catch nothing. He comes as master. That's an act of surrender. That's an act of humility. And it's an act on God's side of stepping in that we may step out. They go forth to get out. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I will do what you have said. But I want to remind you. I've been here for three days. No result. And Jesus is saying one minute with me we change it. Somebody shout hallelujah. When Jesus appears, failure disappears. Somebody say big amen. amen. Launch to the deep. God never says to someone, pack up your luggage and go. You failed enough. He's going to teach you, Elizabeth, go deeper for where the fruit is waiting for you. They had this done. They did what? They enclosed. Close. They enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their night break. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Stand up man of God. Pastor come here. 
As many of you as are really pastors, pastors in a church, can you come and stand by me? If you have a congregation and you are a pastor, come and stand by me. If you are an evangelist and you are going around this country, come and stand before me. If you are a huge teacher, break. The Lord told me last night, each and every one of you that came here seriously for a reason, He's going to give you net breaking and boat sinking miracle. I'm not sure you heard what I said. From emptiness to too much. Say with me, net breaking. Net breaking. Boat sinking. Boat sinking. Miracles. Miracles. For my ministry. For my ministry. From today. From today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say two times by yourself. In the name of Jesus. Net breaking. Boat sinking. For my ministry. Try it again two times. One more time. Try it one more time. Both sinking. Miracle for my ministry. Say hallelujah. Think of this if you are a child of God. Few hours ago, my baby Susan. No fish. Few hours later, not days, not days, net breaking, net breaking, say that loud, net breaking. look at verse 7, and they beckoned unto their partners, who is your partner in catch? You have partner in drought, uh, in, 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 in emptiness. But you have partner in catching. They beckon. They said, Neighbor, neighbor, hey, come on, come on, come on. The ship, the, the, the net is breaking. We can hold on. Our ship is full. We need your empty one. Somebody say yes. Yeah. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services. Inspirational, world-class production. Have you ever felt like starting over? With Jesus, you can. If you'd like to begin a new life, Pray this prayer from your heart. Dear God, you know everything about me. I know I have made mistakes. Please forgive me. Come into my life. Help me to follow you always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. 
You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preaching, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from 
the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Idahoja university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis who went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, 
never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the hood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abisho Idausa. He would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared, I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came, he said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I, was, I did a meeting for 
Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead! I said what? I'm like, what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! 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 
Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Benson in the house. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. I said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where yeah, they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand it. I couldn't wait. 
and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, we prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. 
and flying around on my bicycle in those days i went through the city of benin in nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life after five hours of hard session i found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before the corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial I walk boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call benson launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and 
a Doctor of Law degree from Oral Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He's also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supertax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin in Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa, who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is, in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work, and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma, remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. 
Ida also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom had bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your altitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used 
to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.